just take... I think what's coming is good, you see. Yeah. So I the Cat um, was at the, at the forefront of um, High Speed Logic. He was hired into Motorola mm. in 1964. Mm. One of the dates, by the way, around about here is wrong in an article published by me in uh, Electronics World a year ago. I think I say 62 instead of 64 or something like that. But I went to Motorola, no, no, I went to America in 62, 63 on the turn of the years, December 31st. And then I was a year and a half in Los Angeles. Takes me up to 64, then I was, yeah. So I arrived at Motorola, 64, because Motorola got concerned that uh, they were making the fastest logic mm. and they needed an expert on interconnecting it. And um, money was flowing in uh, to get good Americans, freedom-loving Americans to the moon, you know, which was a difficult problem. The referees of all the journals were good radio men who'd run away from industry decades before, before digital electronics was significant, you see, so they didn't understand what I was writing and they recommended don't publish. But all the same, I did publish everything I wanted to publish uh, for 12 years, um, but I didn't publish the, the dangerous stuff, but my main one was in the IEEE transactions computers called Crosstalk, blah, blah, blah. Wasn't that, oh, right. No, 1967. Yeah, just even, even that was political, mm -hmm. and um, it was delayed three years because it was an advance in electromagnetic mm -hmm. theory, and you were not allowed to make advances in, because it turned out that digital was where the advances were, not analog. Mm. And m the predecessor to me was Heaviside, who sent pulses down a cable from Newcastle to Denmark, and he was advancing the art, mm. the, the pr <coughs> sacred or arcane subject electromagnetic theory. Then, mm. fr from my point of view, no progress was made for more than half a century until I was mm. sending pulses across a logic board, which is Heaviside's problem scaled down, mm. scaled down in size and speed. And you go up in speed, so you go down in mm. size, and the problem's the same. But that had not been a problem mm. throughout the wireless television and also radar era, because mm. radar is analog, it is not digital. The radar pulse mm -hmm. is not a pulse, yeah. it's, a, it's a series of sine waves. And so the referees and the editors of the journals came out of that stable. The cat anomaly implies, I think, there's an anomaly, but now yeah. I say, no, I accept <laughs> classical theory as perfect. So, well, so I can't, I, I can't call it the cat anomaly. Well, I just want instruction from these <laughs> luminaries. Well, on, on And um, I'd, I'd accumulated two more people who were attracted to um, electromagnetic theory. Um, one was Martin Davidson, who, like me, was a co contract engineer. The bash was just going, sorry, can I just plug it in the list? Uh, I really need it because of this thanks. cold. Thank you very much. I really need thanks. drink, not thanks. a drink. Yeah. Eva, it might have run away yeah. from you. Yeah. You know, like on your computer at home. Yeah. It's some of the software is similar to the one in your computer at home. Uh, yes, it? I, 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 I Okay. Okay, these seem to have come out okay on here. I was worried in case they recorded the same thing over again. But... Rough sketch of Maxwell's theory. Oh, here we are. You're you're around about 1885. 1886, 1887. Now, yeah. 1885, Heaviside was 35. So he wasn't that young. Yeah, well, let's try to record it. Okay. Wait, um, it now, the book is published 1892, mm. when he was 40, 42, but that it was pre published in The Electrician in what I said. I said 1885, didn't I? Mm. His dates are really easy. Do you remember them? 1850, 1925. He's suppressed because he's just too mathematical. Okay, the answer. Some of the integrals in that thing, was, and I, I, he's into he's in very advanced maths. So what was his education? 
his education pretty well left school at 14 or right. 15. Mm. But then, you see, he... Uh, okay, do you really want me to talk Heaviside for a while? Well, it's up to you. It's I mean, I you. know so much about If you just want to say a bit about it, it's up to you. Right, okay, a bit about Heaviside. Okay. But this is, this is published probably by me and a bit and other people. <coughs> now, Heaviside left school, let's say at 14. Mm. Heaviside okay. had very poor hearing throughout his life. Right. Now, at the age of 22, he went up to Newcastle to help his brother, who was employed with what later we would tend to call the um, the post office yeah. uh, to send pulses, signal, send mm. stuff down the coax cable undersea from Newcastle to Denmark. Yeah. That's when he was 22. I'm saying this from memory. I do know it more accurately, but this is from my memory. Uh, which is pretty good, but not perfect. Now, he realised at the age of 22... Mm. No, let's say another thing. His uncle was Wheatstone mm. of the Wheatstone Bridge. So he did a have access to uh, what you might call more clever stuff than somebody who leaves school at 14. Mm. Um, but what else? But he, never, he virtually never refers to Wheatstone in his letters and his books, which mm. is curious, I think. But there's no evidence that he fell out with him. Um, as not that I know. Now, so he goes up to Newcastle when he's 22, let's say in 1872, and he realises that he's a major, that he's, he's a giant. Mm -hmm. So he said, round about then, that he would devote his life to electromagnetic theory for the benefit of humanity. Mm -hmm. Which, of course, set him apart from everybody because... Mm -hmm. They wanted his motivation, and it certainly wouldn't be that. Mm. Um, and so society will uh, give you the money to live, which of course mm. isn't true. You know, society is terrified of people who do really important yeah. work, and they want want less of it. Anyway, um, um, now one of the things that's said about heavy side by, for instance, my co-author David Walton is that he wrote Maxwell's Equations and that Maxwell's Equations were a big jumble before Heaviside came along. Now, the trouble is, Nigel, who's following that up, didn't have good access to Heaviside's five volumes, but he's just climbed into the, the first of the all the four five volumes, which is called Electrical Papers 1, and he's messing around at about page 452. The actual page is just recorded into a tape. And, you know, but what I find interesting is that page 438 is what I've always said is Heaviside's greatest contribution, mm -hmm. which Heaviside only... No. Now, when you go to near the page... Now, we're round about the page mm -hmm. where Heaviside, for the first time, formulated Maxwell's equations, because mm -hmm. Maxwell's books are a bit of a jumble, aren't they? Mm -hmm. You know, he has 12 mm -hmm. equations or whatever. But if you go 14 pages earlier, there is what I've marked in this mm. book. Now, this is Heaviside writing in a pro when he's approximately 33. This is page 438 of Electrical Papers, Volume 1. Now, in Maxwell's theory, there is the potential energy of the displacement produced in the dielectric parts by the electric force, and there is the kinetic or magnetic energy of the magnetic induction due to the magnetic force in all parts of the world, including the conducting parts. Now that's horrendous, <coughs> whatever that means to someone living in the 20th century, let alone the 21st, is very little. <coughs> but then he said, they are supposed to be set up by the current in the wire. We reverse this. The current in the wire is set up by the energy transmitted through the medium around it. Now that is the statement.